Welcome to the Cosmic Cafe Show, where the paranormal is normal. My name is Eric Brown, and I'll be your host and server. For today's daily special at the cafe, we are brewing up the question of how do UFOs get to Earth? Have you ever just wondered if UFOs are real? Then how in the heck do they cross the galaxy to get to us here on Earth? Well, to help us answer that question is Mr. Robert Schroeder, who has a diverse background, including a BA in mathematics from Rutgers University, an Associate of Science in Aerospace Engineering, and an MBA. Mr. Schroeder's book, Solving the UFO Enigma, talks about how modern physics, like quantum mechanics, coupled with the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva, Switzerland, are revealing new technology that just may explain UFOs. Now, Bob is joining us via video link from Boston, Massachusetts. Welcome, Bob. Um, Eric, thank you so much for having me on your show and giving me an opportunity uh, to show people uh, why the UFO phenomenon should be taken very seriously. Um, I think the likely connection uh, between modern physics and UFO technology is, is not only very exciting, but I believe that we UFO researchers uh, can play a major role in getting the scientific community uh, to take a much closer look at this phenomenon. Excellent. And I know we have a lot of great stuff to talk about, but before we get into it, you may recognize sitting next to me is Ruben Yorarte, who appeared as my guest on our pilot episode, and today is my second guest here in the studio with me. Welcome back, Ruben. Hey, Eric. Thank you so much for inviting me and also being here with Bob tonight. And Bob has some incredible information to share with our audience. Yeah, yeah. definitely. We're looking forward. And so, Bob, uh, you have a uh, ton of complicated math and theory, which uh, is in your book. And you promised to me that you'd make it very easy for just about anyone here at the cafe and mm -hmm. watching at home to understand the theories which are in your book. Is that right? Uh, uh, yep, it sure is. And um, I, I know um, when people see a book with math and, and physics and stuff like that, they might be uh, a little, a, a kind of a little bit taken aback. However, um, it's really, the physics is really not that bad. Um, I think everybody will find it very interesting. Um, and, and it's, um, and I'll kind of go through it. I'll kind of carefully explain all the different concepts. But the most important thing, I promise there will be no quizzes or tests. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a relief Thanks, for me. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of quizzes and tests, maybe we should ask, uh, you, you had a good question for Bob. Yeah, uh, Bob, I'd like to ask you this question. Why should we pay attention to the UFO phenomenon? Uh, Ruben, that's a terrific question. And, um, and uh, the reason is because um, the implications of this technology for our civilization um, are, would be terrific. Um, it, would, it would be a civilization changing, and um, I think it's well worth pursuing uh, because the applications from this type of technology uh, would ma transform our civilization for the better. And that's why I've spent so much of my time investigating the UFO phenomenon. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Bob, I have a question for you. What is it that makes UFOs so technologically puzzling anyways? Uh, another great question. And, and what it is, Eric, is um, <clears throat> uh, there are really two big questions on UFO technology. Uh, the first question, number one, is how do they get here? And the second big question is, um, how do they perform inertia-defying acrobatics in Earth's atmosphere? Uh, but for, uh, for today, we'll just look at the question of how do they get here to planet Earth from distant star systems. <clears throat> Great. <laughs> so, uh, Ruben, you have a question for him? <laughs> right, just to follow in yeah. with that uh, uh, there, Eric. What is, what is going on? in the modern physics that lead you to believe that we may be unraveling the technology of these probable extraterrestrial UFOs? 
Oh, okay, Ruben. Um, that's uh, a wonderful question. And um, I'm, I'm afraid here the answer won't be quite as quick. I'm going to have to, here's where the physics starts. Okay? Oh, no. So everybody, <laughs> everybody hang on. Hang on, okay. I'll hang on to the okay. desk here. <laughs> and t tighten your seatbelts. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, well, <clears throat> uh, the, what's, um, uh, in a nutshell, um, we, we, uh, we, if you look at the universe, the universe is actually made up of only three major components. And those three major components are uh, matter particles, force particles, and the space-time within which these matter and force particles interact with one another. And, uh, and uh, what's interesting is uh, all matter particles uh, the, the number of matter particles, unique matter particles in the universe, hey, is uh, actually Bob? very few. Yes. Uh, I think you brought a slide that kind of helps to illustrate this too, right? Oh, yes, I yeah. did. That's slide um, number I, three, right? Uh, that's exactly yeah, right. Yeah. Yep. I think and, we have that slide available. If, okay. Because uh, uh, otherwise, if, yeah, there we go. We got the slide up so that maybe people can follow you a little bit better now with the particles. Oh, I great. know for me it helps. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Eric, thank you for reminding me. I, I'm afraid I forgot. No, and, uh, that's quite all right. Okay. That's quite oh, all right. Okay. Um, well, it, it turns out that um, the number of unique matter particles in the universe is very, very few. Um, um, it's actually only four. And one of the nice things about physics is there's not too much to memorize, you know. And uh, there's basically, everybody's heard of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom and electrons. But the protons are made up of something called quarks. Uh, but there's only really two types of quarks, the up quark and the down quark. And then the only other two particles in the universe that make up, uh, that uh, combined make up 99.99% a, a of all the matter in the universe are the up quark, the down quark, the electron, and the electron neutrino. That's it. Those four. That's it. Likewise, for the force particles, uh, they too are, there's only four fundamental forces in nature. They're the strong nuclear force, the weak nuclear force, electromagnetism, which everybody's familiar with, and gravity, which keeps us pinned to the ground. And, uh, and the strong nuclear force, uh, like uh, matter particles, uh, is also carried by a particle and the strong nuclear force is carried by particles called gluons. Uh, the weak nuclear force, which is responsible for radioactive decay, is carried by particles called the W plus, W minus, and Z neutral. As I mentioned, we do have a little bit of physics, but I'll go through this fairly quick. Yeah. Uh, uh, hold the, on a second, Bob. I, I okay. think they might have gotten a little ahead of you. The, I think they oh. brought up a, the uh, fourth slide, and they shouldn't have done that quite yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, uh, if well, they that's could take that back down, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. uh, um, go ahead and wrap up. Uh, <laughs> okay. Sorry to interrupt you like that, but oh, no problem yeah. at all. No problem. Well, um, so the electromagnetic force is carried by photons, and okay. most people are familiar with that. And gravity is carried by a particle called the graviton. Uh -huh. And and I forgot to mention the strong nuclear force is carried by. Uh, gluons, or maybe I did. Oh, the strong nuclear force is what holds the nucleus of the atom together. Um, so, um, anyway, but what uh, particularly interests um, physicists and scientists are the forces of nature because the forces of nature make things happen, like the electric force, the electromagnetic force, and a bolt of lightning. And so for that reason, scientists are particularly interested in the forces of nature. And it is, it is believed that at the very beginning of the universe, 15 billion years ago, that all four forces, uh, fundamental forces, were united in a single super force. And, and, uh, and they can now go to slide number four. Yeah, I was going to ask you, um, yeah, uh, I they, guess speaking of that is, um, how does solving this hierarchy problem help us solve the question of how these UFOs do get to planet Earth? Oh, okay. Well, uh, let me just uh, back up just real quick here, Eric. Okay. Um, uniting the four forces of nature Okay, is, so you uh, want that slide, the fourth slide uh, yeah, for that? Uh, yes, that's okay, right. Uh, okay. 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 Right. And... 
uh, but uniting the four fundamental forces of nature is considered the holy grail of modern physics. And, um, and, and if you wonder what physicists are doing over the last several decades, that's what they're doing. Uh, they're trying to reunite those fundamental forces, both in theory and in experiment. And, um, and they've actually had some success in uniting the, non, the three non-gravity forces, strong nuclear force, weak nuclear force, and electromagnetism. However, they haven't been able to get gravity into the mix. And the reason why is if we now go to slide number five, Okay, that, uh, while they're that, bringing up, there we go. Okay, yeah. uh, if you look at slide number five, the thing that will jump out at you right away is the um, Lots gravity. Lots of math. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> but gravity is much, much weaker than the other forces of nature. Um, as a matter of fact, just to give you an idea, um, electromagnetism is like, 10 to the 36 power stronger than gravity. That's one followed by 36 zeros. Absolutely humongous, the difference between electromagnetism and uh, gravity in terms of their interaction strength. And, this, um, and likewise, for the other non-gravity forces, they too are much stronger than gravity. And that is a big puzzle in modern physics. Why is gravity so much weaker than the other forces of nature? And it actually has a name. It's referred to as the hierarchy problem. And, um, and, and that is, um, I believe, solving the hierarchy problem is the key to solving the UFO enigma. Oh, okay. Excellent. Well, Ruben, I think you had a question well, for him as well, right? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, a lot, what I call the cosmic soup. I call it, I call it math. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of ingredients, but well, Bob, w with all this, how can these theories be proved? Oh, uh, well, uh, uh, Ruben, actually, we've got to back up one here. Um, <clears throat> uh, we, uh, we need to spend a little bit more time on the hierarchy problem. That and sounds a, like a problem, Bob. It sure is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gigantic problem. Um, so they've been trying to solve the hierarchy problem um, for a very long time. And <clears throat> now, and which slide they, did you want for that? Did you still want the, the uh, uh, fifth slide, see. or do you want a new slide for that? Uh, no, uh, keep number f uh, five, the okay. fifth slide. Okay. Yep, Good. sorry about that. No and, uh, Yeah, um, but um, uh, anyway, they've been working on trying to solve the hierarchy problem, but they haven't had much success until... And this is where it relates to the UFO phenomenon. And everybody uh, in the audience needs to pay attention here because this is critical, I believe, to explaining uh, the UFO phenomenon. Um, so up until the 1970s and early 80s, um, they thought that the universe consisted of four dimensions, three of space and one of time. But... Um, uh, right about that time, they began toying with the idea that there might be more than four dimensions. And one of the theories that has come out of these concepts <clears throat> is something called string theory and M theory. And they, and to date, um, uh, uh, right now they believe these theories are postulating the existence of 11 um, dimensions of space-time. And if wow. we could... Uh, move to slide number six. Okay. Okay, and now everybody's gonna start to begin to see the connection to the UFO phenomenon. Uh, if we're on slide number six there. Yes. Um, okay, um, what uh, the, the, one of the current theories that's out there is called um, uh, 11D E8 by E8 theory. And this postulates, it's, it's a subset of M theory, which is, which, um, if anybody wonders what the M stands for, physicists joke and they call it the mother of all theories. And this might be the final theory. It could very well be. But what they believe is that there are two membranes floating out there in a larger 
uh, uh, 11 dimensional space time uh, like I'm showing my hands here and uh, these two membranes are parallel to each other now of the 11 dimensions six are believed to be curled up at every point in space time so that leaves five larger dimensions the four that we're familiar with which are on the membrane that we live on which is referred to as the weak membrane and then the fifth dimension or the five-dimensional space between those membranes uh, is referred to as the bulk, B-U-L-K. And the other membrane that's parallel to ours is, is referred to as the gravity membrane or the Planck membrane. And here's the key. Here's the key to the hierarchy problem. Um, and, and everybody's got to pay attention here because this is the most important uh, uh, piece of information here. Um, it turns out that one of the theories that um, they developed um, was uh, uh, they, they believe, uh, part of these M theory, they believe that gravitons uh, of all the particles in, uh, that are postulated to exist out there, all the matter and force particles, only the graviton can travel off of the space-time membrane that we live on, which is our universe. And that's apparently the reason why gravity is so weak, because the force particle that carries gravity can uh, work its way, it can actually float right off of the membrane, our universe, and go into that bulk. Now, uh, that still didn't solve the, the hierarchy problem until a modification of that theory came along. And that theory... Um, is called warp geometry. If we could go to slide number seven. Okay, and, we have slide uh, seven. Okay, yeah. and in slide number seven, uh, what happened with warp geometry was developed by a Harvard physicist and a physicist from John Hopkins University, and they believe that that bulk area, that space between the membranes, is severely warped. Uh, in, in terms of uh, the space-time in that area being very, very warped. How, how warped? Well, they believe um, that gravity in the bulk, as you get closer and closer to the gravity brain, increases in strength to 10 to the 16 power stronger than gravity on our planet Earth. That's one followed by 16 zeros. And that would solve the hierarchy problem because it tells you that the vast majority of gravitons in the, in the overall universe are not on in our universe, in the space-time membrane we live on, but rather they're in the bulk. And that's the, that's the answer to the hierarchy problem. And, um, but, and then one... Uh, last thing and then we can move on here uh, as soon as I saw that theory I realized how UFOs get to planet Earth um, and what the, and here it is general relativity tells us that where space-time is warped severely where gravity is very strong distances shrink mm -hmm. and it turns out that if, if a UFO can <coughs> can uh, can get off the space-time membrane we live on, referred to as the weak membrane. If they can get uh, into the bulk, that space between the membranes, that all they have to do is go in partway into the bulk, and the distance to other stars shrinks dramatically. And I'll give you one example, and then I'll let you guys take the floor. Here's one example. Um, it, um, it, to go to Alpha Centauri, all the UFO has to do is go into the space, into the bulk, to where gravity is only one ten thousandth of uh, its maximum strength in the bulk. Mm -hmm. And if they get in just that distance, um, the distance to Alpha Centauri shrinks from 25 <coughs> trillion miles to just 25 miles. Wow. wow. You could. You could jump into your car and drive there in half an hour, depending upon the speed limit and the bulk. And that's <laughs> the speed limit. <laughs> I could just see the uh, cosmic CHP out there. <laughs> exactly. After stopping by the cafe, right? <laughs> the cosmic uh, chips. Yeah. There you go. There. <laughs> that's pretty amazing, really. And, and that's actual math that, that is, is uh, 
um, uh, recognized uh, as being legitimate math. That's correct. Uh, well, uh, yes. Um, uh, so they haven't proved the theories yet, mm -hmm. but um, uh, that the, that theory, if they should find the extra dimensions, um, it's very likely that um, they will continue. They'll also find that those extra dimensions are warped. Oh, okay, okay. I, imagine um, if we had this technology right now, and we could travel to stars and meet and visit yeah. everything within such a short amount of time. Right. Amazing. Exactly. Yep. But that's and, uh, truly amazing to think that UFOs really could actually exist because the math and the uh -huh. theory are out there to just be proven, but it does look like it might actually be possible. A, yes, absolutely. And uh, I should mention one other thing, because if there's any physicists in the audience, <laughs> they will recognize right away that um, uh, where gravity is very strong, time slows down so that <clears throat> however in the book i won't talk about it here it, it's a bit more complicated <laughs> but um uh, it, i believe despite the fact that time slows down which means it would take much longer to travel even 25 miles um however i, I uh, the question is what is time and i talk about that in the book mm -hmm. and i believe i know how these ufos are overcoming what is known in general relativity as time dilation. Oh, exciting. Well, and, yeah, quick yes. question or, or just a comment, Eric, is that the whoever these people are, are mm -hmm. um, obviously they have a very good understanding of how the cosmos operate. And mm -hmm. what I'm hearing, what you're saying here is by us understanding these principles of physics that perhaps we just will have fine that that, that mechanism or, or improve our technology so that we can, as you said, it'll better mankind, but the fact that it, it will just totally, uh, we don't have to rely on uh, filling up our gas tank anymore there, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would yeah, definitely man. seem to be an archaic concept yeah. To, yeah. to this well, new I'm, technology. I'm afraid we put, would put the Arabs out of business. <laughs> <laughs> but so. uh, uh, that's absolutely correct. Um, if we, uh, when we develop this technology, um, you know, um, going from a boss, the Boston area to San Francisco in the middle of the winter, which I'd love to do, <laughs> would would take about two or three minutes. <laughs> That'd be and nice. Then, so, so let me ask you, uh, Bob, so you, um, what is it? Uh, why doesn't the scientific community, or in particular the physics community, pay attention to the UFO phenomenon? Uh, okay, uh, you know that's a that's a great question. Um, I'm afraid the problem is that um, uh, the Air Force um, decided to get out of the business of, stu of researching UFOs, and in the process, they, in order to kind of extricate themselves from uh, having to to monitor and track these UFO reports, uh, they started to denigrate. Uh, the whole topic of UFOs over a period of years, and they, and the media picked up on that, and they followed uh, the Air Force, um, and and uh, also trivialized the UFO phenomenon. It's very, very unfortunate um, because I think we are dealing. I'm I'm certain we are dealing with a real phenomenon, and I'm certain that these are extraterrestrial craft that are coming to our planet. Um, but um, anyway, that's my take on it. Maybe Ruben might have some observations on that too, uh, why uh, the scientific community is not paying attention to the UFO phenomenon. Well, that sounds like a good yeah, that's a whole to you, topic. Right? <laughs> that's a whole topic in itself, but I think uh, that, yeah. I, uh, as you know, um, you probably, the, the gentleman that comes to my mind is Stanton Friedman, <laughs> who also is a physicist, and from what I re recall, he said that the uh, country that understands and uh, or has the flying sa saucer basically controls the world. And unfortunately, uh, all this technology, or all the all this new science that we're learning, is going into weapons development and not into the betterment of mankind. Mm. And and I think that's part of the reason why you may see this. Mm -hmm 
this ridicule and people and all these different uh, forces out there in trying to make the subject a little more trivia. But, but however, there is a major underlying. Uh, I mean, I look at our black budget. How much money that we're putting into that? Yeah. As far as uh, speaking of budgets, and, uh, since and, we're getting real low on time, I do want to uh, make sure that people. Uh, do find you, now you don't have a website or anything. You just you're an author. You wrote a book. And yep. In fact, I think you self-published your book. Um, maybe uh, we can uh, show the folks at home, and if, if they're at a library or wherever, they can uh, pick up your book, rent it. Um, but there's your book, Solving the UFO Enigma: How uh, Modern Physics Is. Um, I can't even read that from here. Revealing the technology oh. of UFOs. That's correct, right? And, oh, that's uh, right. That's yep. your that's Amen. your masterpiece and. I've actually read it, so <laughs> oh. it is pretty amazing, and um, it does have a lot of math in there. It definitely goes into a lot more detail, mm -hmm. and so I wanted to make sure you had a chance. Did you have anything else you wanted to quickly add about your book before we oh. continue on? Uh, tell people not to be afraid of the math, <laughs> because in the, well. in, the, in the appendix of the book, I explain all the math. I start, you know right from scratch and I build up from there. Yeah. Well, if I could understand it, then, uh, yeah. you know, to a certain degree, I, I think you make the book uh, certainly, uh, you, you know, understandable. There are a couple areas that you say, watch out, folks, you know, <laughs> but yeah. overall, yeah. you're uh, pretty, pretty good. So I, um, and I and I and I sh I'm sorry to interrupt, Derek, but I should mention that the vast majority of the book is text is not math. But yes. I did put math in there because I want to try to encourage people to um, l see it from see the UFO phenomenon the way scientists um, see it, and right. uh, from a scientific point of view. And that's one reason why I wanted to make sure that we got you on the here at the cafe. We really, really do appreciate you staying up and because um, you're three hours ahead of us, and we really appreciate your. Um, um, coming on the over here to the cafe and I'd like to thank our audience also for uh, taking time to watch the show and anything you want to learn about Bob or his book you can also find it on the website for the Cosmic Cafe at CosmicCafeShow.com and you can also learn more about Ruben but I'd like to thank uh, everybody <laughs> yeah I have your bio still up there <laughs> so indeed. appreciate that and with that, I'd also like to thank everybody here at the Media Center who's volunteered their time to help produce this show. It's uh, very important for me to um, acknowledge everybody that's donated their time, all their hard work and efforts to do this. So um, with that, I'd just like to uh, thank you again, Bob, for uh, coming in to us via Internet. And I think we're just about out of time. Okay. And thank you again for having me on.